Well, hey guys, in today's video, we are going to be talking about signs your thyroid hormone is too high. Your skin, your hair, your nails, they are a window to what is going on inside and can give you some clues if your thyroid hormones are out of whack. Your thyroid is a gland that sits in front of your neck and produces thyroid hormone. Hormones are basically small chemicals that coordinate activities throughout your body. Thyroid hormone is responsible for controlling your metabolism and you want just the right amount of thyroid hormone. If you have too little, you get very sluggish and have all sorts of health problems. Too much, you get very jittery and have all sorts of health problems. Now, why might you have high thyroid? There are a variety of health conditions that lead to hyperthyroidism. The most common is an autoimmune disease called Graves' disease. You can also have an inflamed thyroid that's called thyroiditis, something called toxic multinodular goiter, or something called a toxic adenoma. You can even have high thyroid because you are basically taking in too much thyroid hormone in the form of a medication that's called iatrogenic hyperthyroidism. The classic finding to say, oh my gosh, this person's thyroid hormone may be out of whack and may be too high, is your skin becomes thin. You also have thin, sparse hair, hair loss. And because thyroid hormone plays such a role in your metabolism, when it is too high, your metabolism gets revved up, you get very hot, and guess what? You get very sweaty. Hyperhidrosis is the medical term for excessive sweating. That is a manifestation that your thyroid hormone is too hot if you are sweating bullets left and right. In addition to sweating a lot, your face becomes flushed very easily. And many people who have hyperthyroidism develop red palms, palmar erythema. You know, red palms can be a sign of a lot of problems, different hormone disorders. And I have a video all about what it means to have red palms. So if you're sitting there staring at your palms right now, trying to figure out if you have hyperthyroidism, don't freak out. There are a lot of other reasons for red palms, which I cover in that video. With hyperthyroidism, your hair density changes. It becomes becomes very thin because thyroid hormone plays a critical role in controlling the hair cycle. Your hair is not all in the growing phase. Some of the hair follicles on your head are in the resting phase and then shed. But when your thyroid hormone is messed up, all of that gets confused and so you can develop thinning hair. But high thyroid can present in some unusual ways, namely pretibial myxedema otherwise known as thyroid dermopathy. This is a skin sign specific to Graves' disease. It's called pretibia because the tibia is a large bone in your lower leg, and the skin problem typically happens on your shins, on your lower leg. But it can also happen elsewhere, like the backs of your shoulders, the backs of your hands, the backs of your feet. Pretibial myxedema looks like these very well demarcated pinkish purplish bumps, again, over the shins most often. And the skin there, it takes on this characteristic stick peau d'orange appearance, like an orange peel. With pretibial myxedema, you develop edema, swelling. And as the tissues swell, the hair follicles kind of stretch and plump up, so it looks like the surface of an orange. Pretibial myxedema takes on this characteristic appearance because the skin has become infiltrated with mucin and glycosaminoglycans. When you biopsy the skin, you see all of this mucin, non-cellular material. It takes over and it pushes all the little collagen bundles in the deeper layers of your skin, it pushes them apart. Pretibial myxedema is much more common in women compared to men, four times more common in women compared to men. People with Graves' disease who use tobacco are much more likely to develop pretibial myxedema. Why? We're not entirely sure. It may have something to do with inflammation and the autoimmune cascade of inflammatory events associated with this disorder. Pretibial myxedema is very commonly seen with some called Graves ophthalmopathy. Maybe you have seen photographs of people who have Graves disease, but it can impact the skin around the eyes and the, the tissues around the eyes and cause the eyes to bulge out. About 30% of people who have Graves disease will have uh, Graves ophthalmopathy. Basically, the autoimmune inflammation infiltrates around the eye and causes the eyes to bulge out and it can be vision threatening. Pretibial myxedema is typically painless. It doesn't bother people other than the way that it appears. But if it goes on and the thyroid disease is uncontrolled, it can progress to an extent where it actually starts to impair uh, lymphatic flow and you can actually develop lymphedema on top of it. But as far as dealing with the pretibial myxedema, to a certain extent, it may improve with appropriate treatment of the Graves' disease. But other things can be offered like topical or intralesional, meaning injected uh, corticosteroids. 
Moving on to another much more unusual manifestation of hyperthyroid disease, it's called thyroid acropachy. So thyroid acropachy is a very rare manifestation of Graves' disease happening in roughly 0.3% of people with Graves' disease. Basically the fingers swell and you get clubbing of the fingernails. Patients who have thyroid acropachy almost always have thyroid ophthalmopathy, so the eye manifestation. If you take x-rays of the hands of somebody who has thyroid acropachy, you actually see part of the bone starts to thicken in the fingertips. Thyroid acropachy can affect the fingers or the toes, the digital swelling, the nail clubbing. Not only is thyroid acropachy rare, but in contrast to the other much more common signs of high thyroid hormone, thyroid acropachy is something that's going to actually be more of a late stage manifestation of Graves' disease. Disease. But high thyroid can also have some other skin manifestations. Namely, people who have hyperthyroidism actually can present with jaundice. Your skin turns yellow, the whites of your eyes turn yellow. If you lift up your tongue and look underneath it, you can see yellowing. That's actually the first place where jaundice appears. Uh, you know, there are receptors for thyroid hormone in your skin, your hair, and your nails, but also it's very important for liver function. And your liver is necessary for the metabolism of thyroid hormone. So when the thyroid hormone is so high, your liver has a lot more to do with it and it can become negatively impacted and therefore you can develop jaundice. Let's talk about your nails though because one uh, clue for high thyroid is actually something called onycholysis. That is a fancy medical term for when the tips of your nails, your fingernails, start to peel away. With onycholysis, what happens is the distal nail plate, which is the part of the nail plate furthest away from uh, like your half moons, it separates from the underlying nail bed and kind of peels away. Another rare nail manifestation of high thyroid is something called half and half nails or Lindsay's nails. Lindsay was the individual who first identified this. It's not super common with high thyroid. This nail find is actually much more commonly seen in patients who have chronic renal failure or kidney disease, but it can be also observed in uh, some cases of Graves' disease. It's called half and half nails because half the nail is white and the, the distal part, at least 20% of the distal part of the nail kind of has this pinkish look to it and therefore it's called half and half nails. We've talked a lot about the skin and the nail, but when it comes to your hair, you know, I mentioned typically patients who have high thyroid, their hair becomes much more sparse. They develop kind of diffuse hair thinning. But because a lot of patients who have high thyroid have high thyroid because they have an underlying autoimmune disease, they also are predisposed to develop an autoimmune hair loss called alopecia areata. Basically, your immune system, which is you know causing issues with your thyroid, it also decides to rebel against your hair follicle and cause uh, bald patches. Uh, alopecia areata, in contrast to other types of hair loss, is not scarring. So the areas where you lose hair and it goes bald, you can get hair growth back in those areas. Alopecia areata can involve just localized areas of the scalp, or it can be much more diffuse involving all of your, your scalp hair. It also can affect the beard. It can affect the eyebrows, the eyelashes. The other thing that has been observed in some patients who have Graves' disease when it comes to their hair is a hair finding referred to as pili annulati. Pili annulati is a fancy name for ringed hair. It's typically inherited in an autosomal dominant fashion, but in some cases of Graves' disease, individuals can develop pili annulati. Now, what exactly does it mean to have ringed hair? The hair takes on this almost striped spangled appearance. When you look at the hair strand under the microscope, you actually see alternating dark and light. And when you look very carefully, the dark spots actually have little air spaces in them. It's called pili annulati. Some other skin diseases that are common in patients who have autoimmune thyroid disease, high thyroid related to their immune system, is urticaria. Urticaria is the medical term for hives. Um, I have videos as a side note on here of all about how to get rid of hives fast. We talk all about the multiple causes and reasons for having hives. It's very frustrating to deal with. Basically, you develop these red, raised, itchy patches anywhere on the body, especially aggravated by rubbing or stroking the skin, hot temperatures, stress. And a lot of patients who have autoimmune thyroid disease have uh, 
urticaria. Now, urticaria is grouped into two, two flavors. There's acute urticaria, meaning you're getting hives uh, daily for less than six weeks. When you start getting hives daily for greater than six weeks, it becomes chronic urticaria. Now, the key with hives, with urticaria, is that each hive, each welt, it comes up, it's very itchy, but it doesn't last more than a few hours. Now, you will go on to develop hives elsewhere or right next to it, but an individual hive, if you circle it when you first notice it, it should not sit there for more than a couple of hours. Anything lasting more than 24 hours is not urticaria. It could though be another condition that a lot of patients with autoimmune thyroid disease may get. Um, it's called urticarial vasculitis. Vasculitis is a fancy medical term for inflammation around the blood vessels, and it can have all sorts of skin manifestations. Urticarial vasculitis, patients get hives, or what look like hives, but in contrast to ordinary hives, the welts that pop up, they last longer than 24 hours. So when you circle them and they stay there longer than 24 hours, that is a sign it's not just garden variety hives, it might be urticarial vasculitis. With urticarial vasculitis, in contrast to being uh, super itchy, it's often uh, painful and burns. And with urticarial vasculitis, you know, you've got inflammation around the blood vessels. That inflammation causes the blood vessels to get leaky, and you get what's called purpura. Purpura is basically leakage of blood into the skin. So if you take anything away from this video, if you ever get hives, Circle a hive once it pops up and keep an eye on it, see how long it lasts. If it lasts longer than 24 hours, that's a clue that it's not just, you know, garden variety hives. All right, you guys, those are the skin, hair, and nail signs that thyroid hormone is too high. Now, again, I do have a video all about the signs that your thyroid hormone is too low, so you may wanna check that out. I have a whole playlist on my channel, as a side note, if you are new here, all about the skin signs of health problems, like having low iron, having low vitamin D, all sorts of health problems that your skin can provide a clue to. I likely have a video on Anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.